Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at the new Deepin 20 beta. This one, uh, I, I was pretty much going to be done reviewing the Deepins just because it's like they weren't changing a lot. But this new version is radically different uh, from a lot of different perspectives. I'm not saying it's radically good. I'm just saying it's radically different. But I'm also not saying it's radically bad. I'm going to, uh, I actually took some notes, believe it or not. I took some notes like on a sticky pad, half of a sticky pad of notes. So uh, we'll get a dive onto this into this guy and we'll have a look at it so first on their release notes page they say it's new and awesome and uh so you can kind of see here some screenshots some people are looking at it, like i read a forbes article and they're like wow this is like so amazing i actually think it's it's so far into the modern trend, it actually starts looking like a child's toy. <laughs> That's my thought of it. But I don't know. Let, let me know what you guys think when we actually get into there. Um, they have actually taken Google Chrome out. That was a good thing. They replaced that with Chromium. Um, they are at least presently on um, Debian 10. So maybe they've figured it out. I think they've been on Debian 10 for like two versions now. So they might actually have figured that guy out. And uh, you can grab it. The download is still only two gigabytes um, of disk space, which is not bad at all. And so, um, overall, you don't have uh, you don't have much to download. And I found that the download did occur pretty quickly, which is something that we have not seen on. <laughs> on some deepens in the past um, where it's been really slow, uh, really slow to boot up. All right, so let's go ahead and transition on over here for the boot up. We do still have the very beautiful, um, just the startup screens from the, the custom grub menu to your boot screen that you're seeing here. They really have gone all out in making the theming and the styling absolutely one of the best distributions there is. So here is our login screen. I actually created a new account because I want to show you what happens when you have a new account. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that now. Now on the installation, before we log in here, the installation process, it does take a massive amount of disk space. I'm talking 64 gigabytes is your minimum. This is because it does a full partition scheming where it's giving you like a 10 or so gigabyte um, uh, recovery partition. So very much like Windows 10, you have a full recovery partition in it. It has, uh, they're giving you a lot of extra space. We'll have a look at the partition scheme if we can. Uh, we should be able to, to spot that out. As soon as uh, it's a basic OEM install, so you install it, you can shut it down. The first time you boot it, you select your location things, and then you go through a basic user setup profile that uh, is basically what we're going just to look at right here. So here you can go under normal mode or effect mode. Now I have effect mode on the other one. I wanna do normal mode because I wanna see if it will have better performance. It is very slow and sluggish, but that's probably because I am on a virtual machine uh, with effect mode turned on. So we're gonna go normal with this account here. So it may not look quite as flashy, but uh, that's what you generally will, will wanna do on a uh, on a virtual machine. And it certainly is looking a little uglier <laughs> out of the box here. So this is actually the new fashion mode, which was kind of like the old Mac version of it. We have a intro video here you can watch, which we are not going to. And then from over here, you can choose whether you start on the uh, what used to be a Mac-like mode, which is basically just the fashion mode now. It's no longer resembles a Mac. Uh, or you can go with the more Windows, the efficient mode. So do you want fashion or efficiency? You can't have both. So let's just go with, uh, let's go with fashion mode on this one because I think I have efficiency on the other one. Um, so from here, you can reselect once again the effect mode or the normal mode. Uh, we are going to stay on the normal mode here. We'll log out and have a look at the, uh, at the efficiency and the, um, and the effect mode. Uh, later on in here. And then here you can choose the icon theme. So right out of the box, of course, pretty much these three look basically the same. <laughs> Bloom, Bloom Classic Dark, of course, the difference um, is going to be the, the window theming, which you don't really see quite as well. You can notice that the icons do change a little bit live, or you can go with uh, the Boom Classic. Let's go with the dark theme today. So that's going to be your, uh, your basic setup. So you get that type of setup every time that you get launching. 
So you can see here, we actually have the Chromium web browser instead of Google Chrome. So that's actually a move towards privacy, which is good. We have our basic app store, there's albums, file manager. Uh, let's see if we actually, um, I wanna see if we actually have the disks utility on here. Uh, we do not have the disks utility on here. So maybe we'll have to install it. Their basic file manager is, uh, they do have a lot of your Windows style theming as far as the window borders, although they're a little bit bigger and uh, the hover over effects are not quite as big. Um, you can see here, let's system disk, here's data disk. There's there's more to it than that though. So uh, let's see if we can do this. You can kind of see it's, uh, you can see what I mean by it's it's very cartoony. Um, it's It looks nice. I just think that it just seems a little bit too bubbly, a little bit too interesting. I'm not sure how I accidentally added that to the desktop, but I did. Okay, GNOME disk utility. There we are. That's what we want. Thank you guys very much for uh, that. All right, so we also have our we have our music app. We do have a uh, video app as well. Let's see if I can find that guy there. There we are. So here's our movie app. Here is our. Um, our move, uh, mu movie app over here, our music app over here. It is very bright. That is due to the theming. There is actually light themes and dark themes. I thought we went with a dark one, but I guess we did not. All right, let's go ahead and pull that out, and let's have a look at our disks. Utility. So this is what our partition scheming looks like. It's very odd, and that's kind of why you needed a lot of it. So we have a 48 gigabyte partition. We have a, um, we have a 16 gig. Uh, basically three 16 gigs. We have a backup partition. We have a swap partition. We have a 1.6 gig boot partition, uh, very large for a boot partition. So that's kind of what your partitioning scheme looks like. It does do everything automatically, but you do have to start with a minimum of 64 gigabytes of, of space. Now, the next thing they radically changed is the settings panel. Uh, they have also come to the light like Solace did and realized that the settings panel on the side, while it was interesting, was actually very hard to use. And so now we can come right on in. We can create our new accounts. So here's our, our different accounts over here. We can set login, um, auto logins. We have the cloud account. I believe that this one actually requires you to have a deepen account. So I would not recommend using that. Let's click the sign in button, see what happens on that. Um, while that's going, we have our displays. So we have our, um, uh, we have our display scaling. So you can go between one and 1.25. So it's uh, not a lot of options on that, but uh, hey, at least we have a little bit. We can go a little bit higher. So mail applications, Thunderbird is our default. We have a text editor. A lot of the Deepin software is pre-installed, which looks pretty good. I haven't had a chance to test it out yet. As far as your personalization, you have uh, various icon themes. They didn't have our under the sea icon theme though. That's very sad. I liked that, that, that nice under the sea icon theme. That was kind of fun. It's your papyrus if you want that. Uh, we have cursor themes. We have our bloom cursor theme, which is pretty good. Going back to our general, we have an auto. We have a dark. We have a light. And then we can actually just easily select our, our uh, accent colors here. So a lot of good theming options just inside of here out of the box. Very nice. And then you can turn on the effects mode here. So this is what your effects mode is going to look like. So if you do want to turn it right back on. Now with the effects mode turned on, you can see it's uh, it went full cartoon mode. Uh, so we have beautiful rounded borders everywhere. We have, um, it basically now kind of resembles the new Mac type approach. You can go with uh, more or less transparency. It's never really a true transparency because of the, the effects. But uh, you can kind of see what the um, you can kind of see what it looks like here. So it, it does look uh, work a little bit more sluggishly when we turn on the effects mode. You can kind of see that in the uh, in the review, but you do actually get uh, you do get a lot of uh, uh, a lot of good good function there. 
So I would say that the settings panel here is way better than it was. Um, I'm not sure if the um, I'm not sure if the notification stuff has been fixed yet. Uh, I'd have to run it for a while to test that. That was really the thing that made me stop using Deepin because the notifications were crazy. All right, we have our application store over here. I've always liked the Deepin application store. Let's see what this guy looks like when we go uh, go boot it up here. I did not actually poke around in it quite yet. All right, <clears throat> so we are loading. Okay, here's rankings, here's basic internet stuff. Looks very, very nice. Um, I can say that uh, it always has been one of the best looking stores and it's not disappointing here either. You used to have to go in, here's a system theme, light theme or dark theme. You used to have to go in and change if you wanted it to go with the Chinese repositories or not Chinese repositories. I'm not seeing that option here. Uh, and I can't tell where it's pulling repositories from. So uh, let's see if I can find that anywhere. No, that's the cloud syncing. We don't want that. Go by ratings. Yeah, so I can't really see. Uh, I can't really see where it's coming from. There might be settings in here. I have not found them yet. They used to just be right in this pull down where you could say pull from the Chinese or the non-Chinese repos. Maybe they've just dropped the Chinese repos. Although what I see right here <laughs> leads me to believe they probably didn't. So that's something I'm going to need to research a little bit more. That used to be an, an easy toggle button. All right, so uh, the rest of it is uh, pretty much now we just have a, a Debian based system with, um, you know, a Debian based system with very modern theming. You can still uh, go ahead and go with your more Windows type or more your more Mac type menu. You can still right click to turn on the efficiency or the fashion mode. And uh, let's have a look at what the rest looks like. I recall there being more icons and things in here. Um, let's see what our display settings looks like. I want to look for our um, wallpapers. Wallpaper and screensavers. There you go. So this is actually the same as it as it's always been. So come on down here. You can just kind of grab whatever you're looking for. Beautiful wallpapers in here. These are gorgeous. Okay. Your screensaver. So we actually have a screensavers still, which is totally awesome. I do miss my screensavers. I know they're not like, like, oh, you don't need a screensaver anymore. I actually like it though. I like the screensaver turning on when I'm doing things. Overall, it looks very nice, very good. Uh, I do like what I'm seeing here. I am still a little bit concerned with the, um, I'm still a little bit concerned with the, the EULA is still there. Although some people have said they've taken out some of the uh, some of the more heinous parts of it, I did not read it thoroughly. Um, but it does look like a more of a standard EULA now. I did not see those parts as I skimmed through it, so it, the EULA might be a little bit better. I have had still had people from you know Chinese nationals say, yeah, I wouldn't use it if it comes from China. So you can take that or leave that. Um, maybe some more research would. Uh, tell us for sure if it's going to be good or bad to use. Overall, it actually looks like it's a, a very nice, very flashy desktop. Uh, a little too cartoony for me, but that's okay. Um, it might be worth running a little bit while to to give a test on, to give a real trial run to, to, to see how it works. But uh, overall, it's looking very good. It's definitely maturing as a desktop. I like what I'm seeing here. And uh, I guess uh, a little bit more thorough testing would be in order to see if the applications work just as well as they look at least. So those are my thoughts on beta uh, on the Deepin 20 beta. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down there. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. Go ahead and give me some likes over there if you want or some dislikes if you want, you know, whatever the case may be. So thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.